hi guys welcome back to my channel how are we all doing today so in today's video i want to explain what montessori is to the best of my own knowledge in my last couple of last videos i talked about um montessori inspired activities that my toddler engages in and some people asked me just a few persons anyway asked me what montessori means so i'm not a montessori expert i just want to explain it how i understand what montessori is a lot of us have been throwing the word around even myself i used to say montessori before i became a mom but i didn't entirely know what it means until i became a mother and i was just trying to figure out how to be you know a good parent to my child and i decided to go the montessori way montessori has been around for like over a century now it's a type of education it's a method of education or a philosophy of education that is you know that focuses on the child it is based on self-directed activities hands-on learning and co collaborative play it can also be used as a method of parenting which is why i am where i am today and it came into existence through dr maria montessori an italian who was a physician and an educator we all know learning for a child begins as soon as he or she is born and the first few years of their life is the most crucial time that would determine the kind of adult they will turn out to be so dr montessori believed that as important as early education is you shouldn't focus on you know putting facts in the heads of these children but rather it should encourage the need or the urge to want to learn which will make learning easy for them as they get older so she was the of she was of the opinion that you should just engage the children in activities that will, you know would appeal to their their natural curiosity to want to learn more than just stuffing their heads with information and you know facts and things like that in her first class she tried to observe the behaviors of her young children which you know led to her method of education she observed the activities that really got their got them to concentrate engaged all their senses and she noticed that given a free choice of activities children were more um would want to get involved in activities that are more practical she also noticed that they were more interested in toys that engaged their all their senses and these were materials that she provided not the ones that were provided for them they are the materials that she provided so with time she got rid of the huge furnitures that were in her classrooms and put in child-sized furniture so basically her education focuses on the child is a method of education that focuses on the child so she put in child-sized um, furniture materials that the children were more interested in and things like that and she put their materials or their yeah the materials they learn with in low accessible shelves where the children can access by themselves so that's another thing that she did she, she did that because she believed teaching children to do things by themselves would encourage their self-esteem and also appeal to their natural desire to want to learn more and do more so that's why she put their materials in places they can access by themselves their books their art art supplies their toys whatever it is in places that are accessible for the children and they would not need an adult to you know help them bring it down and things like that her method encouraged outdoor activities manual work like clean like clearing caring for plants caring for animals caring for each other I read somewhere that she encouraged her children to in her classroom to always help each other put on their apron just to teach them compassion and you know empathy and she also saw children as different individuals so interacted with each child as a different individual not all of them with time children under her methods start to do better in school and when they write state exams with their peers they will do a lot better or they did a lot better and that's how her method said to gain some recognition and right now it is accepted in almost every part of the world yeah montessori is accepted in almost every part of the world so now every material in a montessori in a standard montessori classroom encourages children to learn through their own experience and at their own pace so i know so far now it sounds like montessori is something that should happen in school 
why do I have to bring Montessori home? Now, like I said earlier, not my saying, like people have been saying, learning begins as soon as a child is born. And the first few years is very, very important. Some say the first five years, some say the first six years. I kind of say the first four years. And if you're waiting for when your child will start school, which will, could be at the age of two, at the age of three, at the age of four, depends on you or the location that you're in, the first few years would have gone to waste, kind of. So why not start the Montessori method at home? So even just from their playing and everything, you already encourage that desire to want to learn. They see learning as something that is fun, something they should always engage in, something that would always you know, be entertaining to them and things like that. And it also teach them independence and just so all the benefits that Montessori comes with. It's important you start to teach them early so they can start enjoying it early. So taking your child to a Montessori school is just as important as, you know, being a Montessori parent, like starting right from when they are born to raise them the Montessori way. Then you can now ask, how can I be a Montessori parent? The first thing I would say is, or that I did, is to provide a safe, nurturing and engaging environment as I make all her I make sure everywhere is safe for her. It's almost it's impossible to make everywhere hundred percent safe. But I try to make it as safe as possible. I try to make it nurturing. I try to keep her toys in accessible places where she can easily get to. So to encourage independence, she can just she knows what she feels like playing with. So she'll just go get any toy she feels like playing with and just engage herself. And to also make her environment engaging. That surround her with toys that would engage her hands on toys. You know that will build her concentration, that will engage her for as long as possible and are practical. Another thing I try to do is to encourage her to trust her abilities, to you know give her confidence. So I try not to do everything for her. I might see her struggling with an activity she's trying to figure out or a toy she's trying to understand. As long as, sh as, as, long as I've shown her the first time how it works, I try to leave her to figure it out on her own. So it will build her confidence. It will you know, she'll help, be able to trust her own abilities to get things done. I don't always call the shots. Yes, even if at this particular time, what I plan for us to do is to read a book and she's not interested. She'd rather play with a musical instrument. Another thing I do is that I try to make sure that her playtime and the things we do together are things that will develop her gross motor skills, her fine motor skills, her language skills, and basically just develop everything that concerns children or everything that is meant to, she's meant to develop at that particular point in time. So if he's from running around, if he's sliding down a workout bench, whatever it is, I just allow her engage all her muscles, allow her engage all her, you know, her brain and everything i make sure that her toys are things that are really going to engage her maybe like her stacking toys or her posting toy where she's putting things into a container and just things like that i just make sure that i just try to develop all her skills with every opportunity i get i develop her language skills by always talking to her always singing to her trying to read to her i don't read as much as i want to but yeah by reading to her it also develops her language skills because that's how she'll pick some I also offer her opportunities to gain independence in my regular daily tasks. Yes, if she's interested in something I'm doing, let's say for example, she likes to clean surfaces, I don't stop her. I just give her maybe like a child-sized rag or sponge so she can, you know, clean her own surface while I'm cleaning my own. She has her toys that, you know, her cutleries. I give her her cutleries to make her feel like she's staring something when I'm also staring you know her meal or something so i just allow her indulge with me i allow her indulge in daily activities it teaches her independence it teaches her independence and practical activities I and mean, these are things that she would eventually do so why you know stop her from doing it so sometimes if she's interested in acting like she's washing i give her you know a cloth she'll just you know be playing with it and be squeezing it and all that it's just children want to do what you're doing and it's a good thing it's not it's something you shouldn't discourage them from doing so yes give them the opportunity to indulge in daily tasks just to you know teach them some level of independence and all that I allow her get her water by herself i make sure her water bottle is somewhere she can access on her own and get to I allow her remove her shoe by herself i i make sure you know 
her drawer where her shoes are, are somewhere is somewhere she can easily access so she just pulls when we come back home she pulls out her shoe herself if, so, if it's anyone she can pull out and goes to drop it inside the drawer even though most of the time she'll drop one feet and leave another one somewhere else but yeah she's still learning she's still growing and all that so my point is i just allow her get involved in daily tasks then i make sure her environment is not cluttered even as an adult i can't really stand you know a cluttered environment but yes even as kids it appeals to their sense of order their natural sense of order so if the, their environment is always in order so i try to group her toys i put her figuring toys in a particular basket her um, building blocks in a particular basket her stack toys is somewhere else just her toys are separated instead of putting montessori um, encourages that instead of putting all her toys in one big bowl and every time she wants to play she knows what she wants in her mind she will not have to be digging through digging through before she can find what she wants to play with it can be discouraging that there are some children that after a few times they'll just not be interested they'll just that thing will be scary to them and they'll just start avoiding it so i try to group her toys into different um sections and very accessible like once she brings out the basket brings down the basket she's seeing everything and she can just pick what she feels like playing with whether it's her giraffe whether you know it's her ele elephant or whatever the case might be so yeah i try not to make her environment too cl cluttered so it does not discourage her from you know indulging in it another thing that montessori en encourages is to observe your child and know the kind of activity that you know they are more interested in so you can encourage it if you have an act if you have a child that is more interested in figurines animal figurines encourage it and um, buy as much as you can as much animal toys as you can as much just surround them with as much animals as you can if it's something they're engaged doesn't mean you now completely shut out every kind of activity but also build on what they are you know more interested in and it would also encourage them to want to learn Another thing Montessori encourages is let them engage in active play rather than passive play. Passive play like screen time. I know we're all guilty of that. My child, I, I, I allow her indulge in screen time sometimes, but I try to reduce it as much as possible. So sometimes she goes days without, you know, her, I mean, TV is usually on, but, you know, on her own cartoon and all that. I avoid it as much as I can because it's passive play. She's not doing anything. She's just staring at the screen. She's not engaging any of her senses and all that is not building any any skill for her so yeah i don't i don't allow her to do it so much especially when i discover that it's you know it does not engage any of her senses yeah or toys that do all the entertaining toys that you just turn on a switch and it's, the toy will do the dancing the toy will do the singing the toy will do the lights the toy will do that no it's, it doesn't engage them and the truth is after a while they themselves get bored so yeah, I focus more on active play, things that will engage her, that, you know, she'll have to concentrate on, she'll have to move her body, move her fingers, and, you know, strengthen her hand-eye coordination and things like that. So, yes, I focus more on active play rather than passive play, which is something that, you know, as a Montessori parent, you should do. I am guilty of is do not distract them while they are playing. The truth is, sometimes I can't help it, but... Um, Dr. Montessori will say that the, the work of a child is play. So the same way as an adult, when you're busy working, you don't want any distraction. That is how it is with them when they are playing. Playing is their work, so they do not want distraction. When you distract them, you're kind of breaking their concentration. And one of the importance of Montessori method of education is to teach them how to concentrate. And that is why it encourages activities that, you know, that engages them a lot so it will build their concentration so you'll be able to con so they will be able to concentrate for as long as possible so even as adults as they get older they will be able to concentrate on something whether it's reading whether it's a job whatever it is it just builds their concentration because the truth is some of us as adults struggle with concentration and we don't want that for our kids so but when you're now distracting them when they are playing you're breaking that concentration and they'll find it difficult to you know concentrate on something for so long so i leave her especially when i'm in the same room with her she knows that i'm just there she doesn't care what i'm doing the point is i'm in the same room with her she can focus on an activity for as long as possible and to be honest i sometimes put my phone on silent because of that because i know once my phone rings it's going to distract her so i don't want anybody calling to distract her to distract me and make me distract her so yes i allow her you know play for as long as she wants to without 
trying to interrupt her except i have to maybe she needs to eat we need to go out she needs to shower she needs to nap or things like that but she does not have any other thing to do everything she can do with her time is play so another thing montessori encourages or the last thing i'm going to talk about that montessori encourages is freedom yes but you know help them help themselves you don't just give they're still children they're still kids so you don't just get, give them freedom to do whatever they want let's say for example now there's an age nora will get to that i will stop completely deciding what she wears yes i will guide her to make the right choice especially when i consider the weather or the occasion we're going for or the type of day we're going to have but yes i will not continue to always choose the top she wear the skirt or trouser or whatever she wear the shoe and all that you have to allow her you know give her the freedom to decide what she wants to wear and it's the same thing with food yes you might you surround them with healthy meals but at some point you have to allow them choose what they want to eat yes sometimes i can like this afternoon i dished out something else for her to eat but she obviously wasn't interested and i got an alternative which gives the same nutrients and allowed her to eat it so yes you have to give them freedom help them help them help them help themselves is something um, dr montessori also says but yes you still have to give them freedom to make their own decision so as adults they, they grow up with that ability to trust their instincts and make their own decisions themselves so i think i'm going to stop this video here before i you know talk your ears out thank you so much for watching please share this video with people like comment support my ministry people support my ministry if you've not subscribed what are you waiting for please hit the subscribe button hit the notification bell so that every time i post a video you're going to get a notification and watch it almost immediately thank you so much for staying till the end see you in my next video